All right, everybody, welcome to Sticks and Sips. This is Frankie Drinks, and this is Lucky Episode 13. We've been on for 13 weeks with you guys every Wednesday night, bringing you the Drew Estate Virtual Happy Hour. And I'm super honored to be here. Uh, last week, we had a, a huge show talking all about the 305. And this week, we're going to talk about one of my favorite, favorite things in the world. We're going to be talking Scotch whiskey. So uh, so let's, let's go to the menu for tonight because this is a happy hour. So what's a happy hour without a cocktail? And tonight, we have the blood and sand. Uh, I know all of you are saying, what's a blood and sand? Well, I'm going to tell you about that uh, shortly. Our sips tonight is Glen Grant Scotch Whiskey, and we have as our guest the very wonderful Robin Cooper, global whiskey advocate for Campari USA, and that includes all these great brands, including Wild Turkey, Russell's Reserve, Long Branch, uh, Forty Creek, and and last but not least, Glen Grant. So we are super honored to have him on the show. Not only that, I got a special surprise. I've got Mr. Pedro Gomez. When you say Undercrown, that is the man that you automatically think of. So we got uh, Pedro Gomez from Drew Estate, our not only our Undercrown brand ambassador, but our factory ambassador. Uh, and, and he's going to be with us today. Plus, plus, we're going to be talking all things Undercrown cigars. So those of you guys that are that are out there grabbing your sticks tonight. Go ahead, light up what you got. Uh, but we're going to be waxing poetic about Undercrown. So uh, this is the time to go ahead, light up. And uh, and I've got uh, an amazing crew tonight in the Zoom Lounge. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and check into the Zoom Lounge for a quick bit. Say hello to everybody. Uh, Mr. Robin Cooper, welcome to Sticks and Sips. Hi, Frankie. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm, I'm so excited to have you on the show tonight. I'm excited too to be here. Well, you, you're going to meet a whole bunch of uh, crazy people hanging out with us tonight. They're checking in from all over the U.S. and they can't wait to hear to what you got to say about Glen Grant whiskey and whiskey in general. And we're so excited as I am personally excited to have you on board. And uh, next up, I got my man Pedro Gomez. Yo, Pedro Gomez, oh, what's going everybody? on? What's Dude, going on? Not, this is how we're kicking it right here. I got this right here. I got this little thing up in here. And everybody will know what I'm pairing this one with. And this All right. Is I, I, sips, and that's a good choice. It's a good choice, help. Pedro. <laughs> it's a good choice. But unfortunately, Pedro, you're not smoking this one. Oh my goodness, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it to you. I had to I take know. I had to take you. So you are what? well connected. <laughs> You're trying to tell us that size matters. Look at that. <laughs> my it's, man, you look long, pretty. but like a pencil. Anyway, so uh, Joey, what are you smoking? I'm smoking manifesto. Manifesto look. is quite possibly one of the most insane cigars that we make. It's incredible. When you see it, you're like, how is it possible? And when you smoke it, it's a dream the whole way. It'll, it, I don't know how, we'll see how long it lasts. If this episode goes over an hour, we'll see how far in, into it I am. Well, we're gonna time it, we're gonna time it. I love when he say dreams because Drew stays the company that make your dream come true. That's it. <laughs> all right, so we're, we're gonna come back to all of you guys. So uh, thank you for being in there. Uh, first of all, I'm not gonna forget tonight, um, Listen, uh, we got these great giveaways. We have five Pappy Van Winkle uh, Family Reserve uh, cutters from Zycar uh, for you. All you have to do is ask a question to me, hashtag Ask Frankie Drinks, or to any of our Zoom Lounge guests, and uh, we pick your question, you win a cutter. And these things are fantastic. And uh, I know we got everybody out there that can attest to them. They're, they're a great, great, great addition to your collection. So uh, make sure you get your questions in, get them in early. You know, as they say, vote early, vote often. This is what we got. So make sure you get your questions in, uh, get your comments in, get your check-ins in, because one of the 
best things. I can't see what you're seeing on Facebook Live, but I love going back the next day and re-watching and seeing all you guys check in from all over the U.S. We got people checking in from, from all the corners. We got like, you know, we got Florida, we got South Carolina, North Carolina, Utah, Texas. We got Mexico checking in. We got places in the Caribbean. So it's super awesome to see you check in. So make sure you get your question in and we'll try to get your, uh, you know, get you one of the five questions tonight. And I'm sure it's going to be some fantastic, fantastic questions coming down. Uh, I'm a little thirsty, so it's time for a cocktail. So tonight, uh, I've got our cocktail of the evening is called the blood and sand. So, uh, so here are the very, very simple ingredients, guys. You know, we have four ingredient cocktail and you just all you have to do is just measure the same amount. This is one of the greatest cocktails you can make with, with four ingredients. So we got our Glen Grant Scotch. We have hearing cherry liqueur. We have some sweet vermouth. And then we have, uh, I use some fresh blood orange, but if you don't have fresh blood orange, you can substitute some regular orange juice. And the directions are super easy. Combine them all. Uh, you wanna give it with some ice. You wanna give it a really nice shake. And you want to get it into a coupe glass. You know, if you don't have a coupe glass, use a champagne glass. And if you don't have that, use a martini glass. If you don't have that, use any glass you got. And uh, you want to just go ahead and, and shake it till it's super chilled. And here's what we got. We have our blood and sand. And with that, I say uh, slancha to, uh, to all of you out there. And I'm going to take a little sip. And wow. That cocktail is amazing. And I was going to tell you a whole lot about that cocktail, but I am not. Because at this point, uh, we got a special slide coming up. Can, uh, can we get production to throw that slide up? I believe it's slide number four. And I wanted to introduce a uh, gentleman that is our special guest, our first guest for tonight, Mr. Robin Cooper, Global Whiskey Advocate. And it's Global Whiskey Advocate for Campari. So you guys are going, what's Campari? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But trust me, he represents the most amazing whiskey brands on the planet. So with that, without further ado, I want to welcome Mr. Robin Cooper. Robin, Hello. welcome. Hi, Frankie. How are you? Great. I'm doing fantastic. Listen, I was going to talk about... Uh, I was going to talk about you and I was talking about Glenn Grant and I'm not saying we're not doing that. I'm saying that we're going to talk about the blood and sand. So you tell me about the blood and sand because, uh, because it gives me an opportunity to sip on it while you're chatting. Well, actually it was uh, the story. It was a Spanish story, Sangre y Arena. And it's the story about a young kid who, you know, goes from rag to riches becomes one of the greatest matadors in Spain. And uh, he marries his childhood sweetheart, Carmen. But as his fame rises in the arena, um, he starts to uh, get noticed and is noticed by a wealthy seductress who charm overwhelms him with her charm. And so he embarks on this torrid affair and his life, well, while the fun lasts for a short while, his life sort of goes downhill a little bit and he starts becoming a little more reckless in the, uh, in the, in the Plaza de Toros. And um, unfortunately, the bull gets him. Uh, but just before he dies, he makes up with, his, uh, with Carmen and, and it's all good, but then he dies. And um, it's the, the, the idea of the blood seeping into the sand. Now you would have had, <clears throat> that movie was, I think, uh, made in 1922, so around about pro, just after Prohibition. So you would have lots of American bartenders suddenly out of work. So what, what do they do? They go to the corners of, the, of the, the globe and work as bartenders. So the blood and sand, one of the very few classic Scotch whiskey cocktails, first appears in the Savoy cocktail uh, compendium or cocktail book and uh, so it would have been an American you know, bartender who would have created or concocted this fabulous drink based on that incredible story of um, you know, the, the bullfighter who 
they made it into a movie, actually. It was a silent movie starring Rudolph Valentino, um, the great, uh, it was a silent movie, the great Italian stallion. So, uh, and, and Glenn Grant does very well with it because it's, as you said in, in some of your promotional stuff, Frankie, it's a very Scotchy Scot. So um, it does quite well in the blood and sand. Well, uh, you know, listen, uh, having you tell the story about it, having me tell the story about it is so much more coming from you. And all, all I can add is that uh, I, I was able to find, you know, like on the Criterion channel, I believe in the 1954 version, uh, 50, 54, 58 version of Blood and Sand, which was redone, you know, by mm. Hollywood as they would. And it was a fantastic movie. Um, and, and I will give you this. Sharon uh, Stone's... Uh... No, it wasn't Sharon Stone. It was... <laughs> Well, her, her version went straight to video. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, can't, I can't say that I've seen that one, but, but I will give you this, Robin. Uh, my uncle, my maternal uncle, uh, was a bullfighter in Spain. Wow. And, uh, and he did get gored. And so uh, the blood and sand actually has a tie to me. And all I could say is that it is such a wonderful cocktail. And if you really go into the heart of what a classic means, you understand uh, its appearance in, in the Savoy, mm -hmm. in the Savoy cocktail book. And, and for those of you guys out there, that's uh, you know, it's Harry Craddock uh, putting out that, that book that uh, along with the Bon Vivant's Guide uh, kind of covers the, the most basic of cocktails. So, uh, with this, uh, I say uh, slancha uh, to one of the oldest and most classic of Scotch cocktails, and uh, it's utterly delicious. I know some of you, uh, some of the people watching tonight, you know, were like uh, sending me some messages and wanted to make their cocktails tonight to join. So I hope you're enjoying this cocktail as much as I am, because this is fantastic. And um, and with that. So, you know, now I'm going to give you the big floor. So Robin Cooper, on top of those wonderful stories about a, a beautiful cocktail called the Blood and Sand, uh, Robin, please tell everyone a little bit about you. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, uh, I would say that I'm, a, I, I guess, by now an industry veteran. This is my 28th year in the Scotch whiskey industry. And I started back in Scotland... Uh, Back in 93, 94, 93, um, planning production um, across lots of bottling lines. And then, it, and then I got into sales and then I got into marketing and uh, I found my, found my way over to the US, which is, I guess, the biggest market. It is the biggest market for Scotch whiskey, certainly single malt Scotch whiskey. And that's really where sort of my, uh, my career has really been all about you know, promoting the, the category of single malt scotch. I worked in lots and lots of brands. Um, but uh, recently, and I think over the last 12 years, uh, Glenn Grant, which is, um, you'll see behind me, um, this is the still house at Glen Grant. And uh, every distillery will have its own sort of unique, uh, you know, processes. And, and I mean, single malt's a, it's a, it's like a broad language where there's lots of different dialects, different accents, different twangs, and every distillery will have its own unique um, sort of philosophy. And so what we do at Glen Grant, we make a, a lighter style. Um, it's a very fragrant nose, Glen Grant. So fruity, nutty, but you get that real multi notes. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm just having a little sip of the 12 years old neat Frankie. I'm, I didn't make the cocktail, um, but uh, I've had plenty of blood and sands in my life. But uh, so, yeah, we, we're a sort of small, medium sized distillery. Um, we every drop of spirit that we uh, produce is bottled on site at the distillery. I think we're the only distillery in uh, the whole of Speyside that, that bottles everything at the distillery. Um, 
we're quite traditional. Um, a lot of the old processes of making whiskey, uh, we still adhere to. Um, you know, our stills behind me are quite tall and slender. We have water cooling purifiers, which just softens the spirit. And then we're using a mixture of bourbon and, and sherry barrels to mature the whiskey. So we're really looking for, you know, a harmony in, in, the, in the aroma. So that's very important. Um, obviously the taste and, and then the finish. So, so that's really kind of really what we're all about. We, we don't produce an, an awful lot of whiskey. Um, so we're, like I say, we're one of the small to medium sized distilleries um, in Scotland these days. Well, I've got my my uh, my pour right here uh, for everybody, and uh, you know, it, there's been such a boom in in single malts, and uh, you know, and everybody's gravitating towards them. You know, we we've had a a market change, uh, you know, away from blendeds, and people have been exploring more single malts in the, in the recent past, and and I will say that that exploration uh, still got a lot to go, you know, because we've got some amazing brands like Glen Grant. And, uh, and, and I think we were talking before, and I would say, like, uh, a lot of people are being exposed to Glen Grant for the first time. So uh, they're, they're going, well, where can I get Glen Grant? And uh, the good news is uh, we have some wonderful partners in – ABC, Total, Binnies, and Specs, and many others that have uh, Glen Grant. So uh, this is kind of, uh, this is your opportunity to explore uh, what I call an amazing single malt. And, uh, and you know, we, you know, we, we're always looking for something uh, new, but in that we're trying to understand uh, what really what really is single malt? So, so Robin, if, if you can give us like a, you know, a, a 30 second uh, just review of what single malt is for everyone that's, that's watching. Well, basically a single malt is um, a, a spirit that's produced from a, a beer mash where cognac would be produced from a, um, you know, grape uh, mash as it were. But uh, single malt is made from 100% malted barley and produced through copper stills at a single distillery. So single malt. So that's the de definition of Scot in Scotland. And I think what, you know, you touched on a couple of points there, Frankie. I mean, you know, there's some very big brands. You mentioned, uh, you know, a couple of them earlier on. But what I find is that the uh, Americans all have loved Scotch. I mean, Scotch is... America's our, our biggest market, and uh, there's a, there's a, the American consumer is always looking for something new. I mean, there's lots of explorers and discoverers out there who are looking beyond maybe some of the staples. And, uh, you know, and, and as they get into some of those smaller brands that may be perhaps harder to find, they're really discovering some, some little gems, I think. Um, and there's plenty of, you know, discovery and like I said, there's lots of different styles of, of malt whiskey, and we're just one style. Um, we happen to be quite a, um, an easy entry point, I guess, uh, in that malt whiskey journey. So, um, but I think, you know, what we see nowadays is that where you would once have, maybe a, a former generation would be loyal to one brand, and that would be their brand of choice, we now see uh, whiskey drinkers, you know, reaching out and trying lots of different things. So, you know, people will have various bottles of whiskey in their home. Sometimes there'll be, you know, um, bourbons or you know, Japanese whiskey. I mean, I think the world of whiskey right now is just so amazingly diverse. There's so much choice out there. And again, I mean, I think single malts, like your mezcals, are, you know, really... It's, it's really a handcrafted product. I mean, there are human beings, you know, involved in making this. I mean, not everything's done by a computer. You know, a lot of the, the processes that we do at Glen Grant are, you know, over a hundred years old. I mean, in fact, our master distiller, 
he's not over 100 years old, but next year he'll have spent, he'll have marked up 60 years of working at Glen Grant Distillery. And he started at 15 years old and he followed the footsteps of his father and his grandfather. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, not many people will, you know, work in the same place for 60 years. I mean, I guess it would be comparable with Jimmy Russell at Wild Turkey Distillery, who I think he's now on 65 or 66 years. But, you know, that's, that's really, that's the guarantee, if you like, of the quality of the product, that, that experience, that craftsmanship, you know, those many, many years of, of um, you know, working to perfect, it's, it's almost like, this whiskey is almost like a, a finely tuned Spitfire engine. I mean, you're literally using precision instruments to craft this whiskey to get where it is now. So um, I think that's, that's, that's the compelling thing, I think, for uh, consumers, whiskey drinkers, is that those stories, those, those production processes that are so unique that people just lap that up. They, they love it. Well, I'm going to say this, you know, when, when you go, our, our master distiller has been uh, working for 60 years at, uh, at our spot. It's not only a, a point of celebration and, you know, when we're talking about, you know, Jimmy Russell, you know, we're talking about some, some amazing products that are coming from the Jimmy Russell world. But like, give, uh, th th let's talk a little bit about the history of Glen Grant because we're, you know, we're talking about the 1800s and, and it's yeah. a history that's long. So uh, give us a, a, a tidbit, a, a look into the history of Glen Grant. Well, yeah, I mean, that, you'll, you'll get a, a rich history from all of the distilleries. And I, I think I, I tuned into Sips and Sticks a couple of weeks ago and there was a distillery also with a very rich history that comes from a small island, but we, we were founded in 1840. So this year is our, our 180th anniversary. So it was founded by two brothers, John and James Grant. In fact, we're, I think, one of two distilleries that has the founder's name on the label. So Glenn Grant, so John and James Grant. In fact, Grant's a very common name in, in Speyside where, you know, a lot of the distilleries are located. In fact, there's lots of Grant still in the uh, whiskey business, but the two brothers, they, they founded the distillery and um, the son of one of the brothers, he took the distillery to the next level. And uh, he was the one that introduced these tall stills behind me because in those days you know the late 1880s you had phylloxera that was destroying all the vineyards so they couldn't drink cognac anymore so with scotch whiskey was a great replacement um so you would have a lot of these you know distillers who would study engineering because this is this was the victorian era where you know they were building railways uh, in fact the grants you know invested in the railway lines but they were building bridges and tunnels and roads and and of course, that engineering, you know, um, they made breakthroughs in distilling and they, they found that the, the shape and size of the still and the height of the still has quite a big impact on the, uh, on the character and the style of the spirit. So, so we introduced, or Major James Grant introduced um, these tall stills behind me, but then he also went a step further and he brought in um, these water cooling purifiers which really was a way of polishing that spirit, refining it just a little bit more to create a, uh, a wonderfully um, aromatic spirit and a, quite a gentle spirit. So if you think about, you know, you have the smokies, you have the big heavy sort of styles, Glen Grant would be your sort of softer, gentler, more aromatic, more of yet that, as I said, that scotchy scotch style that you, uh, you would expect from a lot of the Speyside distillery. So, um, so yeah, so we're 180 years old and uh, you know, we hope that we're in business for another 180 years. So hopefully uh, some of your the people tuning in will give it a, give it a go and, and go out and buy a bottle and try it for themselves. I mean, what I can tell you is that I have Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible and he scores very highly the, uh, the Glen Grant line. So I think the 18 years old was best Scotch whiskey 
uh, in of the of the year this year and 2019 18 2007 so four years in a row the 18 years old which I have a little bottle here best scotch according to Jim Murray so well, that's uh, 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 you uh, to try it then I don't know what is well you know listen uh, I need to get my hands on some 18 year old and I'm going to give a little shout out to uh, to a wonderful Campari people in South Florida, uh, Marita Leonard, Marco Benson, uh, Slancha, you know, uh, I'm, I'll be waiting to taste some of that 18 year, you know, and uh, for those of you that are trying scotch and looking for that perfect pairing, give Glenn Grant a chance, 180 years in the business, I think they probably got it right. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, let me get my production team to, to throw up that uh, beautiful side of Glenn Grant. And uh, so you guys get familiar with it. Uh, Glenn Grant, 12 year old, you know, 12, year, 12 years when we're talking about Scotch whiskey is the youngest whiskey that's going into that bottle. Uh, it's 86 proof, uh, wonderful aroma. It, it's just so flavorful and, uh, and I'm not gonna reveal my pairing but, uh, but Robin's probably got, got it right there in his hand. So uh, we're not going to talk about that. But what I will say is thank you, uh, Robin, uh, for being part of uh, Sticks and Sips and uh, helping us to understand uh, Scotch and Glenn Grant and the beauty of it. And I've got my, my cup right here, and I'm going to do a little toast to you. So uh, Slancha, Robin, and all of you watching, so... Uh, you're not going anywhere because uh, I'm sure there's going to be some questions for you uh, very shortly. Uh, but now I'm going to go to my sticks guest. So I just have a question. So when you say Speyside, where is that in the map of Scotland to picture it in my head? It's kind of up in the northeast, um, sort of about a third of the, w the way up on the east coast. So it's on, it's kind of between, if, I, I don't, not many people, um, Scotland's such a small country. I mean, it's between Aberdeen, where okay. Trump built one of his golf courses, and Inverness, which yep. is, and that's probably about 90 miles. So it's kind of in the middle there. And, and all the distilleries really are along, sort of located next to the river Spey, which is a great salmon fishing river. But most of the distilleries will, will get their water from a lot of the little streams that, that flow into the river. And we call them burns. And a lot of that water will be water that will bubble up from natural springs. So the water will be rich in magnesium and calcium. Um, so it kind of gives us a head start, you know, in, in sort of flavor, et cetera. Yeah, the water is so important in, in any spirit, really. The, the water component is that, that real base to build upon magic stuff. Yeah. It's a great part of the country to have yeah. been to the, the Northeast, and it's, it's phenomenal. Well, uh, Joey, thank you for, for mentioning that. You know, so when we're talking about Scotch, we're talking about like, uh, you know, the, the five regions that we were loosely referred to under uh, where Scotch is produced. So don't forget to ask your questions uh, to get your cutter. Hashtag Ask Frankie Drinks. And, uh, and hopefully we'll pick your question. And now's that time where I get to introduce one of my favorite people, Look out, everybody. Here it comes. Here, here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, this is the this is the the Drew State Ambassador. You know, he's our undercrown guy. He's the factory guy. He's, a he's our Rudolph State Valentino. Guy. He's the Rudolph Valentino of Drew, yes. Drew State right if there. Only, if only we could keep him silent and in black and white. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> I have uh, <laughs> Mr. Pedro Gomez. Pedro, welcome to Sticks and Sips, brother. Yo, everybody. So first of all, let me cheers and toast with everybody with this fine whiskey. As you can see, I'm working myself really hard right now. So I just want to toast with everybody that is watching us. Thank you so very much for your time. Thank you so much for telling everybody about this show that we do every Wednesday. And Robin, is, it has been a very amazing presentation. And when it comes to brown spirits and premium cigars we are talking about the beauty of life so thank you so much for schooling us right here 
because everybody wants to drink, but it's good when you know what you're drinking and what, and what is the purpose of what you drink. And when you are when you are smoking, it's good to know what you are smoking, where that cigar is coming from, what kind of tobacco goes into in, in that cigar that you enjoy, who makes that cigar, and the most beautiful and important thing is the story of what we are smoking right now. Well, uh, Pedro, I, I, I will say the the beauty of Undercrown is it's kind of the history, right? The history of Drew Estate, right? Uh, we have a lot tied into to the to our Undercrown line, but more importantly is you know I, I I've talked to you about this, you know when somebody's coming in and they're 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 saying hey look. I don't smoke cigars regularly, but I, I want to know more about Drew Estate. Uh, what should I try? Where should I go? And what's your answer? Oh, when it comes to that, Frank, everything is about reading people's facts. If you're gonna suggest something, you know, it's about knowing what the other person have enjoyed before. If that person comes, from the infused segment of premium cigars, uh, such as acid cigars or tobacco special, and that person wants to try a traditional cigar, a good way to start off with traditional cigar handmade in Esteli Nicaragua should be with the undercrown shape. That cigar right there literally has what everybody's thinking about mild to medium premium cigars. And the difference between that undercrown shade and any other Connecticut shade cigar that, could, that is in the market up there, everything comes down to the blend. Like Robin said, there is a lot of whiskeys up there, but there is something, a particular taste and a particular flavor that distinguishes you from what is available up there. And up there, let me tell you this, up there, Frank, could be a lot of great mild to medium cigars. Everything is about how you can, um, how the end consumers embrace a product that has been made by hand, but at the same time have been made with a lot of work and you put your soul and your heart into it. So whatever we are doing at Drew Estate, when it comes to traditional cigar or any other premium cigar that we make, we made it because we love it. And the underground shade right there is not gonna let anybody down. Even when I smoke with some of my friends that they are not used to smoking cigars, or some of them that probably they smoke once in a while, maybe once a week, may maybe once every two weeks, or even, even better, once a month or in a special occasion, a mild to medium traditional cigar is not, is not gonna let them down because the cigar, everything comes about about the blend. The blend is the one that really sets you apart from everybody that have that cigar up there. Because when the underground shade, we use the Conerica shade wrapper that comes from Ecuador. Uh, we use the Sumantra binder, which is kind of sweet. One of the sweetest tobacco out there, if you're talking about blending, that comes from Indonesia. And you, we also use the smooth tobaccos that come from Dominican Republic. So you got your smoothness right there that really tastes like a creamy coffee. And then you have the flavor, which is the salt and pepper and the garlic that comes from Nicaragua, which is the tobacco that comes from my country. That Nicaraguan tobacco brings the flavor and that really bling, brings the blend to the next level right there. When we launched Underground Shade, that was back in 2016, whoa, well, a lot of people were, okay, so that's a traditional a uh, mild to medium cigar with a Connecticut shade wrapper. But as soon as the people were smoking that cigar down, because the cigar says a lot of stuff. I mean, I can be preaching all day long, all night long about something, but if you don't go ahead and go to your local uh, brick and mortar or, you, or go to your favorite cigar bar or go to any channel where you can find blue space cigars and you find that underground shade, you, you will never know what I'm talking about right here. The underground shade is by far one of my favorite right there when I suggest something for somebody to try something new as a mild to medium for Drew Estate. 
Well, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have said it any better. I know you did take a little sip right now. Uh, I know uh, when, when I was talking to, to Robin Cooper earlier uh, this week, and I said, uh, you know, what should I go with? And I said, you know, the Undercrown Shade is a great, great, uh, in my opinion, a great pairing with Glenn Grant. Uh, there's a lot of flavor a lot of fullness of flavor. And I believe uh, Robin's having a uh, Suprema right now, but you know, we, we won't get that far, but uh, Robin, you're having that wonderful uh, kinetic uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut shade tobacco, Indonesian binder, uh, Dominican and Nicaraguan filler and trying to get that roundness of flavor. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful pairing for scotch. Absolutely. And, you know and, what, friend? The thing is this, man. Yes. But somebody that is not used to smoke a cigar and that person can enjoy that cigar from the beginning to the end. And that person will tell you, Joe, what is this? And when something is good, it's very hard to forget the name. The Undercrown, you know, a lot of people have known this story and that one has a beautiful, legit story that really represents everything that comes from my hometown in, in, in Esteli. Well, uh, so listen, one of the reasons I love Undercrown and I love the way you talk about Undercrown, Pedro, is that Undercrown's a journey. You know, um, you start with the shade uh, and then you go, you can go to the Maduro and go to the Sun Grown. And from there, you can expand even further. So uh, tell me about that journey, that journey of, of Undercrown? Well, basically everything is started off, uh, you know, by somebody making something happen. And Drew Stay in the factory, it, Drew Stay is not, you know, one person show. It takes a village to make something beautiful, to make something that a lot of people will remember. And how the Undercrown came to the picture, it was that, but we were in a meeting and they say, hey, stop smoking Liga Privada because Liga Privada was by far one of the one of the premium traditional cigars that put Drew Stay in the map, you know, especially in the market here in the United States. But the disadvantage that a lot of end consumers had was that they didn't have we we as a factory we didn't have the capacity to bring a lot of Liga Privada to supply all our partners that we do business here in the United States. So when they said to us, hey, you gotta be stopping smoking Liga Privada, but you can use the same tobacco that we use in Liga Privada, but you know, do your own thing, but don't smoke Liga Privada in the production floor. So the guys that work in the production floor, the production chief, the quality control department, the supervisors and the guys that make your favorite Liga Privada, they say, hey, if we are, if we have the opportunity to put our hands and the fears that we use in Liga Privada, well, we can figure it out which kind of grapper we can add into something that we can enjoy here in the production floor. So then they came out with this cigar that didn't have no name. But one thing that when the executive back in that time, one of the, I mean, still up to today, you know, Jonathan and all the people that are no longer with us, they came to the production floor and they came to, to Drew State Factory for meetings. They started to smoke that on them no name cigar that was done and blamed by the guys that works in the production floor, they were amazed. And that's how the OG, Undercrown Maduro came to the market. That was back in 2000, 2010. And the cigar really stole the spotlight. A lot of people misunderstood Undercrown in the first place because they were calling Undercrown Liga Undercrown. But one thing that a lot of people misunderstood was the Liga Privada, as time went by, as year went by, ended up earning his own pedestal here at Drew State. Ended up earning his own pedestal with our end consumers out there. It, 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 you know, a lot of people embrace Undercrown like, whoa, what a great cigar. And not just the cigar by itself, you know, is everything that cigar this cigar brings. So the Undercrown Maduro, yes, we, the guys in the production floor, they use the San Andres Mexican wrapper from the 
Ultimo Corte, which is the top prime from the tobacco plant. And then uh, in the binder, we use a Estaca Habano that comes from the state of Connecticut. And then we use a very nice, sweet, mellow uh, Bahia Mata Fina tobacco. And then we added the good stuff, which is Nicaraguan tobacco right there. And what you got left, Frank, is a, a medium body cigar, a Maduro smoke that has a lot of flavor. It's very complex. It's very well balanced. It's well made because when you're talking about consistency, consist consistency in any cigar brand in the market takes place in the factory. How you can keep, you know, a lot of people in the same page not just by the people selecting the bills in the, in, in the tobacco warehouse. It's not just about the guys providing the right raw materials to the cigar makers. It's not the cigar makers getting all, those, all that raw material and making the cigar like, like really the, uh, uh, the one that the prototype of the original blend. Everything went down. It, 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 once they start to pick one tobacco leaf, if the, if the blend of the undercrown Maduro went two leaf of Ligero, one leaf of Seco, and three, uh, and three leaf of, of Bison, that's how the whole thing is going to be. And that's how it has been since 2010. And that's why a lot of people really affiliate themselves to the undercrown Maduro. And that's why you see the undercrown uh, shade. That's why you see the undercrown sun ground, because the undercrown Maduro came to the market and really pave the road for the other siblings to follow the path. That's a beautiful thing. And how, you know, we as a company, we came out with, uh, you can see it right here in the background, brother. You see it right here? We, I just wanna make sure that we got the whole set ready, you know, I just wanna show a, a beautiful experience where you can see the underground Maduro, the underground shade, the underground song ground, but every single cigar out of those three different cigar brands really tell, tells you and gives you a beautiful, unique, and small experience. And that's what we're doing right here. Well, I will say, you know, the, uh, the journey with Undercrown is, is truly special. And, uh, you know, and, and then we can go into, you know, in, 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 into what these represent which is even going further down what, what, what Joey likes to say is the rabbit hole. You know, we got the Sun Grown Dogma uh, that we just released this year. We got the Shady 20 uh, released this year, all under the Undercrown line that Joey's having a, a manifesto, another, <laughs> another product under the Undercrown line. But it becomes a truly, uh, truly something special, and uh, you know, and at at, at this moment, uh, you know, I I think you and I were talking uh, once upon a time about the whole the whole imagery behind Undercrown. So, you know, so I know Joey is probably taking a small small break right now, but uh, we're gonna come to that in a second. But at this moment, what I'd like to do is uh, if we can go to that lovely Undercrown Dojo Dogma, beautiful, uh, there you've got our, our, you know, our, our Undercrown sticks. But uh, we have a great video that we came out with, no? Okay, so we don't have that great video. <laughs> but uh, you know you what, guys bro, we don't have video, Frank, but we got a story to tell, brother. Because yes. cigar doesn't, bro, underground doesn't. Tell me, like tell that. me the story of the Dojo Dogma Sun Grown. Bro, the Dojo that's... Dogma, bro, the Dojo Dogma, but before I tell you the Dojo Dogma, let me see, because what's the name of the show, Frank? We gotta, we gotta remind the people, this is Steeps and Sips. Let me serve myself a little drink, just to wear my throat a little bit. Hold on, give me one second. So, so Pedro, time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, man. Wait. Uh, I know you're pairing a little uh, Glen Grant on the rocks with the Undercrown Maduro. What's happening, bro? What's happening with the flavors? So what is happening right here, friend? This is the baddest pairing that I have ever had. Because I'm sipping my whiskey only with ice. And I ain't smoking this one right here, the Undercrown, bro. Whoa, that's an experience, bro. Because you know what, bro? Life is too short to sip cheap whiskeys 
I'm just joking. <laughs> and life is too short to really save good cigars. So if you have the Undercrown and you got the Undercrown Manifesto, or maybe you got the Liga 8, or maybe you got some Serie Unicos, maybe you got some Liga Privada that you have been saving for years. You know what, man? Forget about all that. Go to your to your humidor, grab that cigar, cut and light, and drink something good. Because you know what? Life is so short. And you we will never know for how long we're gonna be telling telling stories. So life is about experience, bro. And this is how the only way or one of the cool way how you can celebrate life. And now come back to your question, Frank, about the underground, uh, the underground sun ground dojo dark that one brother let me tell you something if you're gonna come out with a cigar it's not about making a cigar drew stay makes cigar for everybody you know people that are coming to the game like acid you know people that have never smoked a cigar in their life we got you covered you should try cuba cuba or maybe blondie you know great cigars for guys and ladies and we also have the Tabac Especial, which is a coffee-infused cigar, you know. We also have a non-traditional cigars, which is a Laritan. We got Deadwood Tobacco, the four ladies now, brother. You got Sweet Jane, Fat Bottom Belly, Crazy Alice, and the last but not least, Leather Rose. Uh, you got Kentucky Fire Cure. That one pairs really well with bourbon. And we, we also have uh, the Papi Bound Wilco for sure, you know. We're talking about bourbon from the United States. You got to be smoking those as well. But when it comes to traditional, I think, friend, traditional cigar fares really well with whiskeys, you know, especially this one that I'm having right now. So just for everybody to see, this is the 12 year. What amazing drink, brother. And let me tell you something, man. This, uh, this whiskey and this one is a really nice pairing. But come back to... Uh, Underground song ground dojo tag. Everything came back and everything came down to Cigar Dojo, which is an online community that we, that we have up there. You don't have to smoke alone. You're going to meet a lot of people from all over the United States, from all over the world, people that have one thing in common, which is enjoying a very good cigar. And that one, bro, we were very uh honor to make that project with them and the first cigar that we did for cigar dojo was the undercrown maduro dogma i mean a lot of people call that one the undercrown dogma which is a beautiful backspread cigar uh, this uh the base and the same blend of the undercrown maduro bat from the corona viva but the one that we released at the freestyle life a couple weeks ago that one took everybody by surprise was the underground song ground dojo that one. That one, bro, bro, the gra I just put it like this. The blend that goes in the underground song ground was amazing, you know? And then what, hold on, this one right here. Cut like this. And this is what you got right up here. So it's dressed with a beautiful red and gold band. It has a very nice wrapper that comes from Ecuador, a Sumantra Sea, Songran in Ecuador. That's where the name comes from. And then the fillers are 100% from Nicaragua. But the thing is this, when you are blending, it's about errors and tries, you know? You have to try and try and try and try and try and try over and over and over again until you get it right. And even when you think that the blend is good, you have to wait how the blend develops during the sick period of time, that's what we call in the factory, that how the cigar tastes from the first day that you made that cigar in the production floor and how that cigar tastes after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days, and then you're gonna know what the cigar is gonna bring and deliver into your pack. So the Underground Sun Grown by far was a missing stick. The cigar came in 2007, and then this year, 2020, we did a very beautiful collaboration with Cigar Dojo, and we brought, and we brought that cigar in a beautiful back press uh, presentation, or Vitola, if you want to call it, 5x54, a beautiful, nice stogie, back press, 
And you know, the grapper is from Ecuador and the fillers are from Nicaragua. The binders are from the state of Connecticut, which is the stack cut ha, uh, Habano 352. But the thing is this, anybody can, anybody up there can make cigars. And one of the things that we really take seriously is to keep the quality and the consistency. Keeping the quality and the consistency is when you can take a brand that can be in the market for 10 years, which is the underground has been 10 years. And you know what, brother? I love the hat that you're wearing right there because that was one of the fair hat that we came out with the underground. And then another thing is seeing a cigar that has been in the market for 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. I see Robin, bro, talk, talking about the whiskeys, you know, 180 years, bro. That only happens when you are 100, 100, 120 percent commit to the quality and the consistency. It's not about shortcuts. Shortcut doesn't take place in this industry because every somebody that has been smoking underground, and that's the only thing that that person has been smoking since 2010, will notice when this when the blend has changed. Will notice when the tobacco went from uh, kind of super excited to a very lame, boring cigar. So the underground by far, bro, it really takes something that a lot of people look for. And that's why every, every time that you go to every single cigar store in the United States, you're gonna find underground. That's why every time that you take a trip all the way to other countries, we are in 50, 55 different countries all around the world. And how the distributors start with the underground, you know? And the underground really has set the mark really high. And I'm, I'm very happy that people out there, you know, really enjoy the brand because how the humble beginning from the underground start up, you know, every cigar maker up there, they put their hopes, their soul, their heart into a project. And then they're just hoping that the cigar will move. They're just hoping, bro. You know, when you are just hoping that the cigar will move, you are investing all your energy and effort into it. But when you see guys that they are not just smoking that cigar, they are preaching about that cigar. They are sharing stories about that cigar. They are coming out with tattoos with that cigar, share stickers and everything. And that's what we got right here. This is what you are showing right there. Well, boom. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say something right now, cause I know we, we have talked about it and we've got Joey uh, in the Zoom lounge right now. We're going to go into the Zoom lounge. Uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Here we are. So zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, Joey, listen, tell us about the branding uh, for oh, Undercrown because that's something Pedro yeah. wanted to, to say, hey. Yeah, you know what, Joe? Let's tell I'm that gonna, story. I put this life, bro, because, you know, you are the wizard here at Drew Estate. You have been he with is a wizard. day one. And uh, do one thing that, I mean, Joey works really hard, Frank. And Joey really, I mean, barely takes trips. I mean, look at me. Look at me working hard. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very sure that you're drinking the mezcal right there. But one thing, brother, yes, I, I really respect and admire your work. Everything comes with a, a lot of talent, bro. And... I mean, the first time that I saw the logo, I was still in Drew State factory. At that point, Drew State hasn't moved me to the United States, and, and I was still working in Drew State factory. And when I saw the logo, the lion, the crown, you know, and everything, I was like, what the hell is this? Now, this is the question. Okay, fire away. What made you think about that logo? And do you ever imagine how far that logo will go? I uh, definitely didn't imagine where it would go and how accepted. I think everybody, you know, there's a lot of regal looking emblems in, in many products, spirits, cigars. Uh, you know, so that lion style emblem has is, is been around for a hundred years, uh, in a sense. Uh, it, this one in particular, its story is, if you look on a box of Chateau Real, in the vista of that, there's a coin. So you, a lot of the old style uh, artwork always had coins. They always had coins. And one of the coins is of a lion. That lion changed 
and we created Liga Bravada. And then when we came out with Undercrown, which which the original, the Maduro shares a lineage to Liga, uh, we just, I focused in on the head. You know, we had the crown, like, all right, the crown was on top and then we were like, hey, didn't feel right. You know, it just, it wasn't us. It just was like, it, you know, we mailed it in or something. And so we, we had the crown underneath it, under crown. Uh, the first version, the crown was still facing up, but underneath the lion's head. Uh, unfortunately, and or fortunately, as uh, would have it, uh, that logo with the lion with the crown facing upward was taken by somebody else in a different industry altogether. Uh, so we decided at the last moment, oh, well, flip it upside down. That's Drew Estate. Turn it upside down. And as soon as we turned it upside down and it, it was there, it was it was done. It was it was wow, one of those wow. things where you step back and you go, bang, oh, you got it. Know, beautiful, bro. Because and, you know it's, and it's simple. It's not, you know, it's not a big, you know, gaudy thing. You know, it's it's you know, you can wear this as your it's your regal emblem. You know, it's the consumer. It's the guy that smokes underground. This is, you know what? That's my family emblem right there. Bang. Underground. Yeah, there you go. And then, you know, and then you bring in the story behind how it came to be. Uh, and it, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful, full team, all encompassing world of what we do at Drew Estate that, you know, materializes in a product like this. So, and Absolutely. then my little part in it, you know, you know, is, is the dressing on top. So that part's fun. It's beautiful, Joe, because you know what? One thing for sure, that's what makes Drew Estate different, man. And one thing about Drew Estate, we are 100% proud to be from Nicaragua, you yeah, know? Born, and, born and, on and the fact floor. Born, oh, my God, look at this. You you are teasing everybody with those beautiful lighters, bro. I have never seen that one before, bro. Are they oh, coming see that to our they, on the ground? Oh, in this no, one. No one's seen it. No one will ever see it. I'll see it. It's only the property of Joey. So, oh my goodness, now you're killing me, brother. <laughs> you know, it, it's all good, but uh, the, good. The, the story of, of the journey, you know, yep. and that's what I will tell you uh, and everyone watching uh, out there the journey of Undercrown. It is, it is multi level from the shade to the Maduro. To the sun grown. You know what else the, is a journey? To the dogma. You know you what else is a journey? You need Frank? to stop. You need to stop right there. The journey <laughs> is how do we what get to the question? How do we get to the answering of questions so that people can win their cutters? Uh, of course. But first, but first, that's the journey. Uh, I've got my boy Felipe Ojeda there he out is. there, uh, you know. Uh, King of Whiskey, uh, you know, if, if you guys know whiskey in, in Miami, uh, Felipe is our guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, Felipe, welcome to Sticks and Sips again. You know, Thank I know you, you're, you, you're running around and doing your thing and, um, and you, you came uh, late. And, but, uh, you know, you will not miss a, a presentation by Robin Cooper in any way, shape, or form. So absolutely not. Uh, you know what's you know give give us your you know uh, fifteen second take on Glenn Grant because you know we we got people waiting for prizes, but it's such an amazing journey. I mean, to Glenn Grant. So so it's it's funny that this that this call is happening now because. I, um, I was talking to my, I have a group chat with some of the guys that I graduated high school with and they're constantly talking to me about, you know, what whiskeys to, to drink and whatever. And so they were saying, you know, Flip, we need a good whiskey that, you know, isn't overwhelming. That's, you know, you want to, you want to say sessionable, right. But just like very drinkable whiskey that maybe we haven't tried that we don't know that isn't going to break the bank, you know, cause obviously there are great whiskeys at a hundred dollars a bottle, but you know, give us something that we, that we can have. And, you know, I started sitting there and I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, you know, suddenly like I see the calendar. I'm like, oh, Glenn Grant. And they're like, they didn't, haven't tried it. I'm like, no, no, no. The 12-year-old is a perfect whiskey for, I don't want to call it too introductory because it is complex enough, but it is that sort of perfect, if you want to call it an everyday whiskey. You want to come home at the end of a long day and you want to have a nice glass of whiskey that's not, you know, going to blow the roof off your mouth. It's not going to 
totally overwhelm your taste buds. It's perfect. You want to have it with a nice cigar. You can still enjoy the cigar while you're doing that. Uh, so it, it By just the way, came what, up. What, what are you having, uh, Felipe? I know you're in the backyard right now. And, and Felipe is oh, a... I'm, I'm having a, a little 12-year-old. Bottles, bottles a, in there. Bottles right, okay, right in there. Okay, but what are you there. smoking, though? Oh, I'm smoking the uh, Undercrown Suprema that you sent me uh, after oh. my, my son was born last month. So thank so, you, Frank. Congratulations. Yeah, and yeah, I, you, I, believe, I believe Robin is yeah, having me, the same. Bro, uh, let me Robin. tell you something to Felipe really quick. You are smoking right there something that is was a limited edition right there from the Undercrown Shea. The Undercrown Suprema comes with a beautiful, perfected Victola. And that one, brother, is a beautiful stick to celebrate what you are doing right now. This is, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Undercrown Shade. It is, for me, it's, it's one of those really great cigars that, the same thing, it doesn't overwhelm. You don't need to overthink the cigar. You don't need to, to sit and just meditate on the cigar, right? You can really just... Enjoy the cigar, enjoy a glass of whiskey, and it's just, it's, it's, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's, you, get lost, you get lost in that moment that you're spending yeah. with cigar and whiskey, and that's it. It's, it's less about trying to determine, oh, what flavor notes am I getting, yeah. and how, it's really about letting all that go, kicking back and relaxing with a cigar and a nice drink, and, and that's it. Like, like Pedro says, man, that's what life is. Life is about enjoying the moment that you're in, uh, and that's yeah, what, you know. That's I don't know if you guys are picking up the outside noises in my yard, but yeah, I like to come out here and, you know, enjoy the cigar or whiskey. I got apparently puppies from the neighbor over there that were just had. So, you know, very, very boisterous little animals over there. Uh, but yeah, I, th there's something just very nice and zen about just being able to come out here, you know, being able to relax and drink a good whiskey, a good cigar. And yeah, you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to, you know, just, you know, spend all the time at it. Oh, what, what are these leaves? It's just, it's really good. And then when you're done, you're left with, man, I, I, I want more. That's right. you know, there are a lot of cigars that you have them and you're like, all right, I need to, you know, I'm gonna, I'll have one in a couple of days or something, but this cigar, you really enjoy it. And you're able to say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do another one tomorrow. You know, tomorrow I'm going to come back home and I'm going to try to recreate this moment and, and relax a little bit. And it's the same thing with this scotch, you know, Glenn Grant really has that, that approachability in it and that you're able to, you know, have a little bit of it and it, it's not overwhelming. You know, you, you pour yourself a glass, you finish your glass and you say, man, I, I kind of want a little bit more, you know, and the next thing you know, you've gone through a quarter of a bottle and you're like, yeah, it's, it's time for bed, you know, <laughs> but they pair well, so well. Robin would because... say it needs to be a third of a bottle. <laughs> but uh, but that's only from the marketing perspective. Absolutely, man. You know what? Life is what you made of. If you can bring to the mix something that you truly enjoy, that's how you can be happy. Nothing and nobody can make you happy. But if you really have something that you truly enjoy, something that really got your heart and your attention and your soul, that's happening right there. Is that right, Frank? Uh, it is, it is, and and Robin, I, I hope you you uh, you've enjoyed your cigar as well as the Glen Grant, uh, because uh, I will mm -hmm. echo what Felipe said. Um, you know, we had a guest uh, last week, um, Felipe. You, you know Lewis from Winwood Brewing, and yeah. the beauty of 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 making a blonde ale that was light but yet had all the flavors and that had all the experience without being so, um, so cloying. Right. Yeah. And, and in that, I think Glenn Grant captures all that beauty of, of understanding scotch, um, all the flavors, all the nuances and, and uh, just making it so that you can enjoy it. And I think on, that, you know, uh, you know, as I put, you know, you make you, you pour your your Glen Grant, you light your underground shade, rinse, repeat. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you, man. There's there's really a, a lot to that. There are a lot of things that you know that we go out and we enjoy from you know alcoholic beverages to cigars to everything else that you know sometimes challenge us, right? And we see that a lot in food. A lot of chefs want to challenge the way that we understand a dish or the way that a dish is prepared or something like that. And I I'm saying that because I just, this weekend I smoked a brisket 
and uh, or sorry, not a brisket. I smoked a, a pork butt. And um, it was a, a rub that I made and we smoked it for like 10 hours and it was beautiful. And my wife every day now since we smoked it on Saturday has been eating, you know, pulled pork every day. She's like, it's so good. She's like, it's, it's not, you know, overly flavorful. It's not overly spicy, overly sweet. It's just, it's so good. I just, I want to eat it every day. And there's something about producing something that is just enjoyable all the time. You know, it, it doesn't mean that it's not special. It's special in that it can be enjoyed, yeah, with so much consistency. You know, it's like I want to have an underground shade every day. It's not that I don't enjoy Liga Privadas or that I don't enjoy these these robust cigars or, or you know, Maduros or aged cigars or that I don't enjoy, you know, 20-year-old, 30-year-old scotches or peated scotch. I love it. But there's something about being able to enjoy something on a regular basis, and the opportunity that it creates to highlight each moment and to have that approachability that is what makes it special. You know, it's like I can go to this every day. I can have this cigar and this glass of scotch every day and it's not overwhelming and it's not challenging and it's not, you know, it's not, I can share it with people. It's not going to offend anybody. It's, you know, I, I've taken undercrown shades to the golf course with buddies, you know, where I'm like, all right, guys. You know, I brought some cigars. Oh, what'd you bring? Try it. This is great. You know, we're, we're able to still play around the golf. We're able to have a couple of beers and we're still able to enjoy the cigar and the beer and the golf. And it's, and it's, it's great. And I don't yeah, believe that for I'm one second, Felipe. I don't believe that you've ever played golf and only had a couple of beers. So I'm going to leave <laughs> it right there. Yo, uh, Frank, check so, this out, buddy. This is, this is, maybe Joe remember this. Mm -hmm. This is one of one of our first ads. You remember that ad? Joe? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, can you tell us about this? Oh man, come on, bro. If you if you want to bring the message to the masses, Drew Stay bring the message in a very unique way. That's what we, we were just having fun. Purpose. That was just of course, right. Yeah, we were having fun with that mask. That was actually, I think we actually cut the hole in there when it was uh, there was the eclipse. We wanted to look at the sun and we had this, you know, the eclipse of the sun reflecting off the visor and we had the cigar jammed in there. It was pretty fun. A lot of smoke in the mask. <laughs> it was fun. Man, I am way down on this manifesto uh, right now. Listen, um, that cigar right there in manifesto is supposed to be like an like a four hour cigar, but that's not yeah, true. Yeah, that tells you how long the show's going. Right, oh, exactly. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah. Bro, Maybe let's, let's an hour and Kill 20 him, minutes max. And and with that, you know, no offense to everybody, but I have to go to the drawings, okay? Wait a minute. Before you go to the drawing, Frank, how long? Wait a second. Because okay. what Joe is smoking right there is the only <coughs> manifesto. And the only way how you can get that cigar is coming to our virtual events. That cigar right there, you can get in all Ooh. my virtual events. I do virtual events every day right now, you know, and, and, and I do one, two, three virtual events every day. And this goes to all our retailers across the country, but not just me is doing uh, virtual events. Willie Herrera is doing virtual events. Jonathan Drew is doing virtual events. Our TMs across the country is doing virtual events. And one thing that you're gonna check, uh, they're, they're gonna get out of those virtual events is gonna be a very close look about Drew Estate. And Joey came out with the Underground Manifesto. What a great smoke. And that one is a complimentary cigar that's Drew Estate Factory from Esteli, Nicaragua, cheap to our stores across the country. On top of that, you get the Year of the Rat. God damn it, it doesn't get better than that. Joe, I'm going to send you my address when we're done here. Okay. okay. <laughs> you you, you, you do that. You. So, so listen... Uh, manifesto, you're the rat. Um, make sure you're following your Drew Estate folks, but more importantly, get this combo because I, I believe whether you're in Florida and you got ABC in total, uh, you're in a state where total wine is, you're in Chicago, you got Benny's, you're in Texas, you got uh, Specs, you're in California, you got Bevmo. You're in all parts of the United States. Get your Glen Grant. Get your Undercrown. Enjoy. Because it's 
part of the experience. And, and I've said that before. How do you find the perfect complement? You have to experience. You have to experiment. So with that, uh, first up for the drawing, we have Mr. Chris Swan. I'm fairly new to the cigar industry. My question is, what would you recommend for mixing scotch with when pairing with a whiskey? Well, I would say... If you're not going to go the blended route, then a single malt like Glen Grant is a great way to go. Um, a blended whiskey is, it has a lot of uh, definitions, but it's a combination of single grain column stilled with pot stilled grain whiskey uh, made in an area. But I would say, hey, look, take the plunge, go to a single malt uh, that's affordable. And Glen Grant's a great way to go. Great way for you to introduce yourself to the flavor profiles and the nuances that are that are uh, definitely available in, in a Glen Grant single malt space side whiskey plus the different experiences that you can have with a shade, with a Maduro, and with a sun grown. So uh, give that a try, and I hope that enhances your experience. Uh, next up, uh, we got Tim Bako. Congratulations on your cutter. Tell us about the sources of water and wood, and how do you keep a consistent flavor using these resources that change in dynamics being natural products? And Robin Cooper, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to direct that question to you, and I will restate it because it was kind of long, but because um, you need to have resources of water and wood, and how do you, con how do you maintain the consistent flavors uh, in Glen Grant with, uh, with those natural products? That's a really good question, actually. I mean, uh, <clears throat> our, our, um, we've been doing it for 180 years, so we consistently buy uh, bourbon barrels, ex-bourbon barrels, and ex-sherry barrels. And um, when we pick the barrels when the whiskey's mature, we very carefully um, evaluate the barrels that will go into that product. So we will have, or we have a panel of, you know, noses and tasters, and we, we check every single barrel. I mean, if there's a barrel that's not quite right, the flavor's slightly off, we put that to one side. We will not uh, use that barrel. So we'll pick barrels that fit the flavor profile. So, I mean, consistency is very important for us. Um, but, uh, you know, over the years, if you look back and uh, look over a long time period, I mean, at our distillery, for example, I mean, the taste and the flavor of Glen Grant's changed over time. I mean, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, we would use a lot more sherry, uh, ex-sherry barrels to mature our whiskey. So the color of Glen Grant would be a lot darker. It would be much richer, more nutty figs and um, you know, raisiny. Um, now we, and, and this is not just us, this is the Scotch whiskey, whiskey industry as a whole. There's been a big shift towards ex-bourbon barrels. Bourbon, of course, gives you lots of toffee, vanilla, etc. So we're very particular about, you know, choosing the barrels that we pick because every barrel is different, of course. It's like human beings are all different. So that's really, that's really what, what we, how we do it. I mean, we're small enough. We can uh, you know, be very selective. Um, some of the bigger distilleries will, you know, we'll be batching thousands of barrels. We're, we're doing a couple of hundred because we're quite small. So it's important for us to get that, you know, that consistency absolutely right. Of course, we're using the water's consistent. It's always going to be the same. The barley we get uh, is consistent. Um, the temperature is pretty much consistent. I mean, unlike Kentucky, where it gets very hot and cold, the barrels are expanding much more uh, aggressively. In Scotland, it's much more mellow, cooler, a uh, little bit more humid. So there's much more consistent sort of rise, slight rise and falls in the temperature. So maybe that, that provides the answer to the question. 
Well, I, I, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, in that uh, 180 years of history of doing things the right way uh, leads you to um, a, a path to success. Um, at the end of the day, we are dealing with natural products and trying to maintain um, the integrity, knowing that the environment changes um, on a yearly basis and a decade basis. Um, maintaining that aspect of it uh, is part of what makes these great companies amazing at what they do. So uh, congratulations for that question it was fantastic. Uh, next up, I have Mr. Alan GB Britt. Do you think an Isla Scotch would pair well with a fire cured blend from Drew Estate? Or, or would it be just too much smoke if that's possible? So uh, this goes back to one of our previous episodes uh, when we had Simon Brooking on and we would did Isla whiskey with a KFC. And that concept is just, what I call reinforcement. So if you have an Isla whiskey and that's smoky and you're pairing it with something that's smoky as well as you're just layering, you're reinforcing that and you really can't have too much of it. I think it's okay. So Alan, um, do your thing, get your peated, but uh, don't forget to try your non-peated because uh, they also offer you a different perspective on what your what your idea of whiskey is so congratulations alan alan next up uh we have mark hardman uh does the ring gauge of a particular cigar play into determining proper pairings and uh i'll throw that into over joey joey uh do you think ring gauges matter or or they well, don't in in pairings no it, it's really about hey what's the cigar that you enjoy the most and that's the cigar that you pair with uh you know a baseline you know uh a corona is always in my mind a, a fantastic way to start uh it's right in the sweet spot you know it's not too thin it's not too thick um uh, so that that's a great place to start so a good corona or a lonsdale will get you there uh but you know what, if you've got something heavy, if you're drinking a heavier uh, spirit, then, you know, move it up a notch to, you know, Robusto Toro from there. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it really comes down. I mean, you know, I mean, we've had Willie on and, and we've got Pedro on and, uh, but the reality is that the blend is the blend. You know, how you receive it in the time frame you receive it. Uh, based on the ring gauge, based on the blend, the amount of filler uh, that we get. Um, yeah, it, and it, it really depends upon the cigar itself. Is you know, is it a heavy, you know, broadly Maduro cigar? Is it something that's a little bit spicier, like a Habano? Uh, all of that plays more into it than the actual ring gauge. Again, right. you just fall back to, hey, what's your favorite stick? And that's the one you go with. Trial right. and, and error. Right, and we can go down that rabbit hole where whether it's a Lancero where we're go getting a whole lot of wrapper, you know, in that flavor profile, you know, or we're not getting a lot of that wrapper. We're getting a whole lot of filler uh, in that flavor profile. But those are just tiny nuances. And above all things, I say it kind of has to go with what you're drinking, you know, and what you're sharing with. So the blend is probably first, you know, if we were to yep. blend and then you'll go into the Vitola of the actual cigar to see, you know, what fits your profile. And it's also a, a blend of, are you having a tall drink? Are you having a neat drink? Are you having a cocktail? You know, are you having more than one cocktail? So all those things come into play as well. So uh, in that is the beauty of experimentation. So, uh, so experiment. Find out what works for you. 
Hey, uh, Frankie. Um, yes. I'm going to have to abruptly leave you. Um, I've got someone who's uh, come around to my house. Okay, uh, I got you. All time. I had, well, a, had a bit of a, a water leak, and uh, the guys are here to uh -oh. resolve take my care of that. issue. So, with we'll that, take and by the way, just before I leave, um, it's nice to see Felipe. I, uh, I remember having a drink with you a few years ago down in Miami, I think in your bar, but... Uh, it was a good time. Whenever you're back in town, man, be, be nice to catch up and, and grab another one. Listen, guys, thank you so much, all of you. Um, yes, thank you, Robin. It's been a pleasure. On your, on your, your call, Thanks, so. Robin. I have Robin. to leave you, but uh, been a, it's been a slice of heaven. <laughs> Slancha, Cheers. We will Thanks see again. each other again. You know, you're always welcome us at Six and Steps. So, uh, Slancha. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. So, uh, so we had that last question. Uh, if we can get the production team to throw it up right there. Uh, uh, it, so, uh, Ryan, uh, you purchased the 18 year of the Glen Grant and it is how many bottles uh, per year? Well, I will tell you this, uh, before the show went live, we were talking about the 18 year and um, the issue is maturation. And the youngest whiskey in an 18 year is 18 years, not the oldest. And so until they feel comfortable with producing an item very similar to the way we age a Liga, until it's ready, it's ready. And the idea is that you make sure that your product is the best that you can put out in the market before you just say, hey, look, it hey, 18 years and one day we're going to put it out. No, it has to meet exacting standards. So in that, um, what type of bourbon uh, is used? What type of bourbon cask? Well, um, you know, Robin's not here to talk about Campari, but they have a wonderful uh, relationship with wild turkey. Um, and with and in that, you know, you have these ph phenomenal whiskeys like Russell's Reserve and Wild Turkey. So uh, I can guarantee you that we have some wonderful Wild Turkey or Russell's Reserve barrels going into aging uh, that Glen Grant, that 18 year. Uh, Felipe, do you have any insight? Because I know you're my whiskey geek, bro. Uh, no, Frank, I think, I think you're right on point with that. Um, pretty sure that Campari is, is utilizing a lot of what um, Jimmy and Eddie are doing down in, uh, in Kentucky for their barrels. Um, and obviously those are guys that are using, you know, uh, fresh white American oak. And I know that it's not, not all coming from Kentucky. Um, not a lot of oak grows there. So they're using a lot of oak from, from the middle uh, states of this country. But uh, those are barrels that are very well maintained. Um, and they're of the always of the utmost quality. So those barrels do not circulate uh, a whole bunch, uh, given that their production is substantial, but not uh, excessive. Um, they're, they're making some, some, really, some really good barrels, um, aging them for, you know, they're probably getting up to about eight years, uh, 10 years. So there's still a lot of character left in there um, for those Glen Grants to be able to pull out like Robin was saying, a lot of that uh, vanilla and, and toffee flavors, which is what makes those Glen Grants uh, so balanced. Um, after 180 years, you know that those guys are, are being really scrupulous about those barrels. And so I'm sure that they're working very closely with the Russell family uh, to maintain those standards. And you can, you can tell in, in the taste that it's, it's a high quality barrel. Listen, a, a lot of people say, you know, like Glen Grant, I don't know that brand. It's, it's not the, uh, the big Glens, you know, the, right. that, that we recognize. Um, but you, you, you must, uh, you know, and I hope that today people will take a look and, and say, I understand Glen Grant, 180 years in the business, uh, almost, you know, two centuries. And that means a lot in, in the way that they can produce something. Um, we're yeah, you know, uh, Pedro, production of we're two decades in 
you know, they're two centuries in, you know, (laughs) but, but the ideals are the same. Hell yeah, buddy. You know, everything is about being committed. Um, has been keeping it since day one, keeping it real, brother. Right, absolutely. So, um, so listen, guys, um, I'm going to say a final slancha to you. Um, I, I want you guys to, uh, to, you know, this is our, wait a second. We haven't had our Mescal minute. So, uh, Joey, uh, hit us with that last tidbit as we're on the way oh. out. All right. So, the Mescal <laughs> minute tonight's Mescal minute is from this baby right here. I'll, El, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll help you, my man. El Holgorio. Thank you for that. And this is a, this one is like a mineral bomb. It's got a little bit of smoke still in there. A lot of minerality. Uh, there's a hint of like, you know, some natural honey sweetness going on. This one's really, really good. Knock your socks off. So that's my mezcal. What, 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 what varietal is it? Oh, the varietal is Quiche. 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 Excellent. Excellent. Quiche. Hey, Frank. So, you, yeah, go ahead. You, no, no, bro. I'm, this is only my show, bro. But you're. All right. So I'm going to stream your show right now, bro, because I just want to give thanks to everybody that has been tuning in. And the last 70, 79 viewers that we got right now. Whoever come up with a good question, you were giving a cutter, right? Right, Frank. I gave out five cutters, so all right. So we're gonna give an extra cutter and an extra lighter because Joey was teasing everybody. <laughs> so whoever <laughs> asks a question about on the ground right now, a cutter and on release lighter is going to your way. Can we do that one, Frank? Uh, let me talk to production and uh, and they're gonna yeah, do it, do it, say, do it. They Do say yeah. sure, and uh, and they're picking a question right now. They're picking up the last question right now. The last, last question of the night. But it, 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 while we're picking the last question, let's go to that support slide. You know, so uh, I want you guys to know. Listen, uh, different parts of the country, different parts, going to different things. Guys, support your local brick and mortar. Support your liquor stores. Support the guys that 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 have our Drew Estate products, have Glenn Grant, and have these lovely products that you guys can share at home. You know, whether you're working from home, whether you're coming home after work and enjoying, uh, please support them. Support hospitality. It's a real tough time. We're going back and forth, back and forth, and uh, you know. Do what you can. Uh, hospitalities are, are the people that makes us, uh, you know, treat us well. Absolutely. So um, yeah. our last, uh, our last uh, question, uh, because Pedro hijacked my show, Andy, <laughs> Andy Sing, Sing Tao, with all the awesome sticks coming out, what is the most exciting new stick we should keep our ears out for and i'm telling you what i'm going to give that to our production guy mr jack hare he's coming in to the zoom lounge right now to answer that question what should we keep our ears out for the most exciting new stick that we haven't heard of yet uh, Mr. Jack, take it away. Everyone's heard of it. All right, very nice, man. And All right, leather rose. Oh, and for those, I don't of know. No, 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 no. And for those of you, like next week, I just a little preview. Next week, I will have Camille Austin from Casa Lumbre Spirits talking about Abba Solo whiskey. The most amazing ancestral corn whiskey coming from Mexico. And my special guest will be Joey Drew from Drew Estate. And the stick for that evening will actually be the leather rose. So I couldn't be more excited about that. 
So wow, Frank. Oh, Frank the alarm's Frank. going up. You heard that, right? It's right. It, it's the level of Overtime. excitement off the chain. Off the uh, chain. Off Overtime. The chain. All right. So since you are giving a cutter, I'm gonna pick the lighter. Which lighter the lucky winner is gonna get? <laughs> No, you're but the, lucky, the, the winner theater. got the lighter and the cutter. Beautiful. All right, so All right. I'm going to get the underground Maduro lighter since the okay. underground, underground Maduro lighter. You picked the lighter. You got it, right? All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have to move on. You know, we're the, the network is shutting us off. I yeah. want to say thank you to everybody that's been part of Six and Sips tonight, and, and that's starting with Robin Cooper, Pedro Gomez, Felipe Ojeda. It's awesome to see you, my brother. You know, cheers, Frank. Uh, Joey Drew in here. Uh, the entire staff, Always. Jack, and and making six and tips happen. Uh, our entire uh, marketing crew, uh, the sales crew, going out there doing virtual events. Sign on to their stuff. You're gonna get some amazing stuff. Follow Pedro. He's gonna tell you where you're gonna get that that Undercrown manifesto. You know, on his events. Uh, yeah, right there, right there. Uh, an hour and 20 better, minutes. Buddy. It's all good. Uh, send you my address, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I gave you a bunch of those. So don't worry about it. <laughs> if you smoke them, then just let me know. Uh, anyway, so with that, you know, next week, uh, Abasolo Whiskey, Nixta Liqueur from, uh, from Casa Lumber Spirits, and, and one of my favorite people, Camille Austin and Joey Drew from Drew Estate talking all great shit and pairing leather rows. So uh, get your leather rows. You got a week, y'all. You got a week, and that's it. I'm out. Yeah. Bars closed. Tip Good your riddance. servers. You ain't got to go home, but you got to. Hey, everyone. This is Frankie Drinks. I'm the Cigar and Spirits Pairing Specialist for Drew Estate. I'm also the ambassador of the Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve Barrel Fermented line of cigars. It is an honor and privilege to represent Drew Estate Cigar Company. Through our rich and innovative history, we truly have created something for everyone's palate. Together, we will travel to different locations to experience cigar pairings with spirits, cocktails, beverages, and food. Along the way, we will explore a few locations, hang in a few bars, learn some history, and truly celebrate our lifestyle. Come join me as we embark on this journey of discovery. Cheers!